audience. And in many ways, one could argue that you're selling the, the argument. Uh, so all of these skills are what employers need and history really does uh, provide these skills. And this is important because a lot of people have this very gloomy idea about history and oh, it's just, you know, you, you're not gonna get money. It's just, it's just not true. They're also well paid. Um, so we look at the median income, right? So that's the average in the middle income, in thousands of dollars. Um, okay, business is a bit more, but not by a huge amount, right? Not, you know, $5,000 more. Uh, it's actually more than life sciences. Um, so, you know, it, this, is, this is a very reasonably paid, um, you know, uh, discipline to be, to be taking. Probably you don't need to be convinced of this, but this is a useful thing to have when talking to, let's just say, family members who might be a little worried about, oh, well, but, you know, can you make a living? Yes. You definitely can make a living. And also making a living isn't, isn't the only question too. You will make a living, but also it's your life as well, right? And don't you want to do something with your life that you really love and enjoy? I mean, to, to kind of force yourself to do something that you don't enjoy, I mean, we're talking decades. I, I wouldn't recommend it. So in any case, uh, it's important to know that this is a quite well-paid field and you know, that you, you do not need to worry about that. Okay, this is actually a useful thing to, to think about. Graduates get a wide variety of jobs. You can see all these different kinds of jobs, you know, communications director, probably people haven't thought about that, but you know, that's for, um, you know, oftentimes businesses, uh, marketing agencies, um, you know, all these different, or it could be museums and, uh, um, historical societies, they need someone who is providing the information that they want to the public. Archivists, we do have this um, training. I, I teach that class. Uh, assistant professor, well, for that you would need to go on to get a PhD, but that's also a possibility if you decide at the end of the MA that you want to go on and get a PhD, then you'll have a good uh, background in that. And then we have these other things, judge, banker, you know, judge is useful because when we're thinking about law, um, the kind of way that you create a legal argument is so parallel to the way that you create a historical argument. You know, because we have the basis of in English common law, things are based on precedent. So you need to make an argument and then you need to show that the law and the precedent supports your argument. So. And then we can just see some of these other analysts, research. So we can see there's a lot of stuff here about research, analyzing, um, being a librarian, um, other kinds of instructors, uh, proposal writer, collections manager, all these different things. So perhaps these are things that you haven't necessarily thought about, but they are still out there. And this gives you uh, either straight up the training you need the, for them already, or the stepping stone towards the further training that you would need to get. Okay, so places our own graduates found careers. These are graduates from the College of Staten Island, uh, the Library of Congress. That's an exciting one. Um, that's my, my own student who is now the Director of Slavic Acquisitions at the Library of Congress, which is the largest library in the world. Uh, one of our graduates is now an assistant professor at the New York University Department of History. Uh, he's doing a very interesting uh, book on uh, kind of Mexican-American relations, 1950s to 1970s. A Department of Education, many, many of our students are social studies teachers. Um, Greenbelt Nature Center. And that's, again, I mentioned before parks, but you see, Parks, oftentimes people don't think about parks as related to history, but there's the history of the Green Belt, there's the history of, of Robert Moses, there's, you know, there's a lot of history, even in a natural setting. And then there are parks such as the birthplace of Teddy Roosevelt that are just sort of straight up history. I mean, it's a it's an apartment building. Uh, and so um, 
you know, it's it's a historical kind of thing that people need to be able to do. Uh, Staten Island Museum, College of Staten Island, many of our graduates find work here at the college uh, in administrative positions, usually New York Public Library, uh, New York City Council. Uh, there's a councilman who's, who's a graduate practicing law institute and, and plenty more. So, you know, people do get jobs uh, that they love. Okay, so let's talk about the structure. Courses for the MA program. As I said before, 32 graduate credits, total of eight classes, and um, all students complete historical methods and two thesis classes or a portfolio class. Now, here's an important asterisk. If you take the certificate in public history in conjunction with the MA uh, program, you don't need to write a thesis or to do a portfolio. Let me explain what a portfolio is. A portfolio is where you take two papers that you've already written for one of these classes, well, for two of these classes, and you revise and expand them. Then you turn it in as a portfolio, right? Um, okay, so, and you would choose courses in four of the five areas of concentration and they're listed there. So you don't have to do all five, but you can choose four out of those five. And that'll give you that broad global training that you need in order to avoid uh, a kind of narrow view of any particular area or country. All right. Courses for the advanced certificate in public history. Right. So 20 credits. And there are three core courses, Introduction to Historical Method, that's 701. That's also a class that the MA students take. Um, seminar in Public History, that's an introduction to public history. I usually teach that. And there's usually some hands-on aspect to it. Um, at, you know, students have done an online exhibit, for example. Uh, there are other things that, that one time in our seminar in public history, we actually did an exhibit at the New York Public Library on Americans in the Russian Revolution. I don't think there's any other examples of an outside group or person creating an exhibit at the New York Public Library. So that was a, a wonderful experience because the students were completely involved in that process. And then there's a public history practicum, which is really the internship. And that gives you experience and connections working in local cultural institutions. So you get placed in a specific museum or historical um, society and you do a project such as, you know, proposing an exhibit or suggesting how a collection could be cataloged if you're especially interested in archives. And then you also choose two specialist courses, uh, archival studies, Archival Studies Practicum, Museum Studies, History of New York. History of New York also counts for the US uh, distribution for the MA. So if you're doing MA and public history, it's especially good to do History of New York because it kind of double dips, which is useful. And then oral history, which gives you hands-on and theoretical uh, experience in conducting oral history. Okay. Emissions information. So baccalaureate degree from an accredited university, 3.0 in the major. That's important in the major. There have been cases where people have started out in other majors um, and maybe things didn't go so well. That's not relevant. It's what's relevant here is what the GPA is in the major. Of course, there also has to be an application form, uh, two letters of reference, a writing sample, preferably from a history course, 10 to 20 pages, and a one page personal statement or letter. And the personal statement is important just to get a sense of who you are, uh, what your interests are. Okay, so for more information, I am going to post this recording and so you can contact me. This is the link to apply. And I also thought it would be useful to be able to see uh, the jobs that are available in public history. I find it fascinating just to see what's available out there. Um, there are also quite a few jobs in the federal government, including historians. And then there's NYC jobs. And oftentimes working for the city can include doing historical work. So uh, that's, that's pretty much it.
And I look 